Hello everyone and welcome to this video presentation on splitting your designs across multiple groupings with Floriani software. It's presented for you by myself, Mark Garretts, and I'm a National Floriani Educator. In this video we're going to be covering both software techniques on how to use the hoop splitting wizard and we're also going to be covering some stitch out techniques and alignment techniques in the actual hooping process. So let's go ahead and get started with the software section of splitting designs from multiple hoopings. To do that today we are going to use Floriani Total Control U. That's our main embroidery design software but we do have some other products that support hoop splitting and they work in an identical fashion but like I said today we're going to use Total Control U. We need a design to split and in order to do something easy and have a design that we all have access to, instead of using an embroidery design per se, we are going to bring in some text into the software and we're going to use that as our example to split. So to do that we're going to come up here to our text tool and we're going to click the T. We're going to come and click our second T for our normal text mode. Come down somewhere into your design window and simply click to bring in the default text of my text. Now normally we change this into some text that makes more sense, but today we're actually going to leave it as my text. But I want to make sure that we're all using the same font and the same size. So come over here to our properties box and if you're not on it, change to solid 2. So go ahead and click the drop down, change to solid 2. And we're going to change the size of this to one inch high. So go ahead and click a 1 instead of the 0.79 and click apply. And that's going to make our text one inch high, but it's going to make it 6.07 inches wide. Now we're going to use a four inch by four inch hoop today to do our splitting width. And obviously six inches is not going to fit in a single four by four hooping. So the first thing we need to do before we start our hoop splitting wizard is we need to actually select the hoop that we want to use. And we do that over here on the left with our select hoop icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to bring up a dialog box allowing us to select our hoop. So you can see it's organized into formats by machine type. And so if I click the down arrow you can see the various types of machines. I'm just going to leave it as the PES format because that's the type of machine that I have. And our 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter hoop is what I want to use, commonly known as a 4 by 4 inch hoop. But you can see here it's actually 3.94 inches, not quite 4 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And when I do that, it's going to preview the hoop size. It also zoomed it in to uh, fit that hoop preview on the screen. Now you can see that obviously this text is not going to fit in the hoop. And this preview here of the hoop itself, this is just for our visual reference. This actually doesn't do anything except show us what the outline of the hoop is. I'm actually going to turn that off by clicking uh, this icon here, our show hide hoop toggle. So I'm going to click that to turn it off. Now it really doesn't matter if you turn it on or off, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to now invoke our hoop splitting wizard. But again, I want to reiterate that it's important before you do the wizard to select the hoop size that you want the wizard to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click the split wizard. It's located right here and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to click it. It gives us a little welcome screen. I'm going to click next. And there's a lot going on on this screen. So let's go over what's happening here. The biggest thing you'll see obviously is here a preview of how it's going to split across these two hoops. Hoop number one is highlighted and you can see over here in the highlight box hoop number one is highlighted. If I click the second one it'll highlight hoop number two. Let me go back to the first one. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Here's my embroidery stitches and here's the outline of my two hoops together. Hoop number one actually extends all the way out to here. Hoop number two extends over to here. And this area in the center here, this is what we call our mount overlap or our hoop overlap. And this amount of spacing is set for us by the software, but if you want to change it to something else, you can change it right here in the mount overlap 
setting right here. So this is the area where the stitches are going to overlap each other. So this is going to be stitched by hoop one. It's also going to be stitched in this area by hoop two. Again, the overlap area between the two hoopings. And if we come back to this box here, let's take a look at what's going on over here. We've got our rotation control. Now this happens to be a square hoop, so changing the rotation from normal to left or upside down or right won't really do anything for us today. But you might want to change this depending on what fits your design best for the smallest number of hoopings. And then our next box here shows us our alignment stitches. Now we can leave this checked or we can uncheck it. For this example today, at least the first example, we're going to go ahead and leave this checked and we are going to come back and show you more graphically what this actually does and talk about it more. But for now, leave it checked. It's going to put alignment stitches into the design to help us align the hoops. And then this next one is center design. Now, this one doesn't make any sense right now, but we'll come back to it. I just want to talk about this last thing here, the mount margin. This is actually controlling how far in from the edges of the hoop the design will start or stop. In other words, how close to the edge do we want to stitch? And you can change this a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and leave it set on its default. Now let's come back to center design. Why is that important? One of the cool things about this is that right now you can see that the design is going to split right in the middle of this T. And we may not have any choice but to let it split in the middle of stitches, but we might want to control where this embroidery design falls in here to optimize where it splits to have as few stitches split as possible. Because the fewer stitches we split, the less problems we'll have aligning things and the less likely little tiny changes or uh, discrepancies in the alignment will show. So we can actually click on the embroidery design here and move it around, okay? So I could move it over here so that the T is not actually in the overlap area and not over the edge of the hoop. I can get it right there on the edge and I could actually stitch this out without putting anything in the overlap area. That way, again, if there's any little discrepancies in the way I've got my hoops aligned, it's not going to be as obvious. But if you can't find any good area to do that by moving it around, if you don't like the way it looks, that's where center design comes back in. By clicking that, it puts it right back in the center where we started. So that's where we're going to go ahead and leave it because we want to show you what happens when you actually split something down the middle of a set of stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And this window is going to preview for us the actual splits. So again, this looks like the other window. We've got one of one, two of one, and this shows us what stitches are going to go in each section. And this line here, this purple line, this is our split line. And so you can see that it's actually going to stitch some of this T. You can't really see it, but there's a little bit of stitches overlapping here. And then some of our underlay is going to extend out into the overlap area. If I click the second one, you can see that here what we've got is just parts of the text that are going to stitch out in the second hooping. And here I've got a button called print. And this allows me to bring up a set of templates that allow me to see what's going on with the way this is going to split. So I can print these for my reference. You can also print them out to do some alignment. Um, but you can see that it's not actually printing it full size. It's actually scaling it down to fit on the page. So this is not useful really uh, necessarily for aligning. Now some of the other screens may be, but this shows you the whole thing. And this again would scale the whole thing. And it's not what we want for doing alignment, but it gives us an idea of how things are going to go together. If I click the next page icon, here's 100% scale. So I could print this out as my alignment tool, but I prefer to print it from the actual software because I have a little bit better control over things. If I go to the next one, you can see here's my thread colors for this design. 
If I go next, here's my second hooping. And lastly, here's my thread colors for the second hooping. So go, you can go ahead and print this out on regular paper for a reference guide. I'm going to go ahead and close it. And when I click Finish, it is going to ask me to save the file. Now, I've already created a split folder here in my design library, library for where to put these. And we need to give it a file name. So I'm going to call it My Text. And this is actually going to save both files as independent files. So it's going to save hoop number one and hoop number two. When I click Save, that's what's going to happen. So now I've got those two files saved. So let's go ahead and open them up and take a look at them because I need to not only open them so I can see that everything looks good, but I then need to save them in my machine format. Now, if I didn't want to save them as a WAF format, which is what I did, I could have saved them directly in my machine format, but I prefer to bring them up in the WAF format and save them individually in my machine format. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and click my open icon here, and I've already got it set to the split directory, and you can see it saved it as two different files, uh, one and two. And this is hooping number one and hooping number two. So I'm going to go ahead and click number one and open it. And I'm going to just go ahead and open up the second one while we're here. And open that. And so we can go back and forth between them. Let's go back to the very first one here. And you can see what's going on. Let me turn it on to 3D to make those extra stitches a little easier for you to see. So here's my text. And here's part of the T. You can see I've got some stitches overlapping here. And here's some of my underlay underneath the T. Uh, and you can see here I've got an alignment mark and an alignment mark. And I've got this long center line here. So let's talk about the alignment marks first. These two marks are there to lock this design in the center of our hoop area. So this is all the way out at one corner. This is all the way out at the other corner. So if we align this correctly, this is always going to stitch in this area right here in the hoop and it's not going to move around on us. And that is going to be important when we get to the actual stitching instructions as you'll see. This line right here, this represents our split line. So these two lines, these two marks right here, they're also going to be in our second file. However, you cannot line this mark up with the marks in the other file. Otherwise, your designs will be on top of each other. So that's not what these alignment marks are about. The alignment marks are there to align it within the actual hoop, not with the next hoop. Aligning it with the next hoop is what this split line is helpful for. But we're actually going to hope that the split line actually ends up in the right place and we're going to use it as a reference guide to make sure it does when we do our stitch out but these are going to take care of getting it in the right place for us this is going to show us actually where to align the second hoop to the first hoop if we need to actually do it visually so let's take a look at the second hooping let me also turn that to 3d and you can see i've got the same alignment mark here and here are our two alignment marks. So this is our split line and our alignment mark. And you can see that the split line is right up against the edge of that other hooping. And so these are our two files. And now what we need to do is we need to save these in our machine format. So I'm going to come up here and click File, Save As. And I'm going to select my PES version 9 format here and click Save. And I'm going to do the same thing with the second one. I'm going to click File, Save As, and I'm going to come here and click PES version 9 and click Save. And that is the section of how to save this for normal physical alignment in our hoops. Now before we get to the actual stitch outs, there's uh, one other thing that we need to do, and that is that we need to print some templates of these designs, and these are going to be crucial for us to line the designs up in the hoop. So to do that, you want to come up here to your print icon and go ahead and click the print preview icon. And I should say 
that it's important before you do this to go ahead and load into your printer some of the template tearaway material. So we're going to print two sheets, one for each hooping. And again, this will depend on how big your design is. You may have to uh, tile it, split across multiple sheets, etc. But let's go ahead and take a look at our settings because it's important to make sure that these settings are set right to get this to work. So click the settings right here in the print preview window. Main thing that's important is right here, print actual size. If that's not checked, things are not going to work out right. Probably don't want to show the hoop. You definitely need to show the crosshairs. Now, I like to use the thin crosshair for this, but if you can see it easier with the thick crosshair, you can click that. Make sure you got stitches uh, mode turned on. And uh, if you want to have color analysis clicked, you can. Do not do print in one page. But let me come back to color analysis. This is going to print a second page with all the colors on it. Now, normally when I'm embroidering, I do print this page. I've already printed this, however, in my other print preview. And this is what I'm going to actually use to print my templates. And I'm going to put two sheets of template tearaway in my printer, so I don't want this second page to print. So this is actually going to print it on one page for me. All right, so this is how I want it to be set up. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And next, I'm going to just go ahead and print this right here with my print dialog. So if I click this, it'll print out the two templates. So we want to print this one, and we want to repeat this with the second design. So we have an actual size template showing not only the design, but more importantly, these crosshairs and our alignment marks and our split line coming out on the page. So before we get to the physical part of lining things up in the hoop, just a few comments. Do not run Save to Sew on the files that you created with the Split Wizard. If you need to run Save to Sew, run it on the original file before splitting. Save it in the WAF format, then open it up and run the Split Wizard. When lining up your printed templates, satins and fills may not match exactly. That's because of the push and pull of the thread, and what's been stitched will be a slightly different size than what's printed. Instead, you want to use the split line to align one design to the next, and since that split line is a run stitch, it's not going to be affected by push and pull compensation. So some of the materials you're going to require before we get started is you're going to need some Floriani template tearaway. That's design placement paper with a sticky back, and that's real critical to this process. You're also going to need some RNK stitch perfection tape in the quarter inch width, and that's our double-sided sticky tape. And you're also going to need that clear plastic template that came with your hoop, and we're going to use that for positioning. If you no longer have that template or your hoop didn't come with one, uh, you're going to want to create one, and you can do that with some clear plastic template material you can get from most fabric stores. Now in the software section we covered how to print the templates, but once they're printed out, this is what they're going to look like. And you can see in our example here we have two different template sheets, one for hooping number one and one for hooping number two. Once you've printed out your templates, you want to trim them to about a quarter inch outside the alignment marks. And the alignment marks are the ones that are in the two opposite corners. Next, you want to prepare your fabric by applying some fusible stabilizer to the back side. Obviously, you want to choose the correct stabilizer for the fabric type. You want to use a piece that's big enough for the entire design with enough extra to overlap the hoops by at least an inch or two. Don't put individual pieces for each hooping. You want one big piece. And it's important to use fusible stabilizer because fusing the stabilizer will keep the fabric from stretching while we hoop it and it'll help prevent misalignment and it makes hooping easier overall. Next you want to apply the printed templates to the fabric and we're going to use this to position the entire design but you want to concentrate on getting the first template in the correct position. The rest of them can just be eyeballed and you don't have to line them up perfectly. Just make sure that you can fit the whole design where it's supposed to go on the fabric and you don't even have to stick the other ones down. Just uh, Concentrate on getting that first one positioned correctly and then finger press it down in place. 
Next we're going to prepare our inner hoop by applying four pieces of RNK Stitch Perfection Tape to the bottom side of the inner hoop as shown in the picture here. You don't have to go all the way to the edges of the hoop, just about a two inch piece in each side or bigger depending on your hoop size, uh, just to make sure that it sticks down in place. Press them down real good with your fingers to the plastic of the hoop and when you've got that done then go ahead and remove the release paper from the top. Next you want to place your plastic transparent hoop template into the inner hoop and then you want to carefully lower them both into place lining up the crosshairs on the printed template with the lines on the clear plastic hoop template. You want to reposition this as necessary until you get it perfectly lined up and when you do then you want to press that hoop down to the fabric to lock it in place. Like we said before, this inner hoop is now locked in place and you want to then position your outer hoop underneath and press the two together, taking care not to shift the inner hoop. Using your hoop template again, double check the alignment and then reposition as necessary. You might have to unhoop and move it around. When you've got it all perfectly positioned, then go ahead and remove the plastic hoop template and the printed template from the fabric. Now we're going to embroider the first hooping and you want to of course start by loading the first split design into your machine, attach the hoop to the machine, and stitch out the first design. Note that it's not necessary to stitch out the alignment marks so you can skip past them in your machine and usually you do that by advancing either stitches or by thread color. But remember that you do need to stitch that split line. Next you want to take the fabric out of the first hooping and next we're going to apply the second printed template to the fabric. Aligning of this template is critical to the success of getting everything lined up. You want to concentrate on getting the two split lines perfectly aligned on top of one another both horizontally and vertically. So you want to make sure they're in the exact right positions. Now as we said before, the actual printed part of the embroidery design may not match to what you've just stitched out because of push and pull compensation but that split line you should be able to match up perfectly because that run stitch won't be affected by push and pull. So again very critical to success to get this piece of template tearaway lined up exactly. On your hoop you may want to replace the stitch perfection tape if it's necessary, you know, if it's not sticky anymore, if it came off. And then you want to place your hoop template in the inner hoop and carefully lower it into place, lining up the crosshairs on the printed template with the lines on the hoop template. This is basically what we did in the first step. The first step was practice for what we're doing now because what we're doing now is critical to success. So you want to reposition this as necessary and as I just said careful careful alignment at this step is critical. If you have any misalignment here it's going to show up in your final stitch out. When you have it aligned and you're happy with it you want to press it down to adhere it to the fabric. As before that inner hoop is now locked in place on the fabric due to the stitch perfection tape and then you want to position your outer hoop below it and carefully press it into the outer hoop taking care not to shift the inner hoop. You want to use your hoop template to double check the alignment and reposition or rehoop as necessary until you get it perfect. When it is then you want to remove the hoop template and the printed template from the fabric. Now we're going to embroider the second part and like they say this is where the rubber meets the road. You want to load the second split design into your machine, attach your hoop, and using your machine controls, position the needle at the corner by the split line. So use the upper corner first, lower the needle manually, and check to see that it hits the end of the line. Then you want to repeat it with the other end of the line. You'll need to rehoop if they didn't line up, and you're not going to be able to reposition them with your machine controls. So you're going to use those controls on your machine that tell the needle to go to the edges of the design, but you're not going to be able to actually use 
the alignment controls in your machine to reposition it because of the alignment marks. So it's necessary that you get your hooping in the right place. Again, it's not necessary to stitch the alignment marks so you can skip past them in the machine before you start stitching. And if this is the final hooping, you can also skip stitching the split line. If you have more than two hoopings, if this is the second, then you'll need to stitch that split line. Now you want to stitch the second part of the design, and if you were careful with your alignment, everything should line up like you see here in the example. Just a few more general comments. Hoop splitting takes practice. I want to repeat that. Hoop splitting takes practice. You want to get several practice sessions under your belt until you're confident in your technique. You do not want to tackle a real project as your first attempt at this. Now, if you have a machine that has advanced placement devices, like a laser, a camera, etc., feel free to take advantage of them, but be aware that the alignment marks that we put in in the software steps are going to keep you from positioning the design in the hoop using the machine's controls. So we're going to go back to our software now and show you what you need to do to get that positioning ability in your machine back. So welcome back to the software section. This next section is going to be for those of you that don't want to do the hoop alignment that we have just described. Instead, you either want to do it completely visually, say if your machine has a camera, or if you want to do it by using the needle drops in your machine and positioning the design using the machine rather than positioning the design using the hoops like we did. In order to do that, we have to make some adjustments to the designs. So we're going to run the split wizard again, and we're going to do things just a tiny bit different. The only thing we're going to do different is we're going to uncheck the alignment stitches. And the reason we're going to do that is remember the purpose of those alignment stitches was to lock this design in the hoop exactly in the center of the hoop. Now when that happens, it also means that we have no room to move it around in the hoop because this design, the computer, or excuse me, the embroidery machine, thinks that this design fills the hoop perfectly, which is what it does because of these alignment marks. So by turning them off and doing a couple other things in the software in a little bit, it's going to allow us to have some room to move this design around. So we're just going to step through the wizard and we're going to save it one more time. This time we're going to save it uh, as no alignment. And I'm going to click save. And it's going to save our two files again. And we're going to now go ahead and open up both of those so you can see what those look like. So I'm going to open the first one, and I am going to go ahead and open up the second one. And we're going to do a little bit of modification to these. Uh, let's go back to the first one, and let me turn it to 3D so you can see our split line. And you can see now we've still got the split line, but we have no alignment marks out here. Now, one of the issues is that the split line is actually all the way out to the edge of the hoop, just like the alignment marks were. So in order to get some room to move this around, we're going to reduce the size of the split line. So we're going to come over here to our sequence view and select just it. Since it's just a thin line, over here in the transform box, you can see it's got zero width, which actually works well for us, because what we want to do is we want to change the height. By changing just the height and not the width, it's actually going to keep it right where it is, it's not going to move it. It's just going to shorten both of the ends on us. We want to make sure we shorten the ends in both design files exactly the same. So this is going to happen automatically for us. Uh, we could have maintain aspect ratio checked. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what we want to do is we want to make this a bit smaller. So I could change it to something exact or I could change it by percentage. So let's go ahead and change the percentage. Let's change it down to let's change it to 90%. Let me type in 90 and that changes it to 3.53 which gives us a quarter inch of movement on either side. Now 
If that's enough, you can leave it there. You can change this to any number that you want and go ahead and click apply. And then we're going to come back to our second design. We're going to uh, select that stitch. And to do that, we are going to select the first set of stitches here, which is our alignment mark. Let me turn it on 3D so you could see that a little bit better, our split line rather. Okay, and we're also going to come here to our transform and we're going to change that to 90%. So we're going to go to 90% on that and you can see it changes to exactly the same height and go ahead and click apply. And now we just have a little bit shorter line, although it didn't move horizontally. So it's exactly where we need it to be for lining up, but it actually gives us some margin at the top and the bottom to move around in the hoop. And then you would go ahead and you would save these in your machine format and then you would when you get them in the machine now have the ability to line them up visually both with the design and with the ends and centers of this actual set of thread here which is going to be your um, centering or your split line so you'd want to line these two lines up this one and this one and when you did that, that would ensure perfect alignment in your hoop. Again, this is what you want to do if you're going to align it visually or by using a needle drop here and a needle drop here rather than using your hoop alignment and your hoop grids to line it up.